Quarter four has started and you can still make your first thousand dollars on Etsy before the end of 2024. Take a look at this listing right here. It's only been up for three months and currently has an estimated monthly revenue of $14,000 and it's already selling 420 products every single month and all it is is this simple cat Halloween design. Or take this listing for example, again listed just three months ago with an estimated monthly revenue of $26,000 selling 500 products every single single month and it's just a simple football design right here and if that's not enough let's take a look at my results from last year when I started my store in November I was able to make twenty thousand dollars in sales and a net profit of fourteen thousand dollars so if you want to have an Etsy listing or an Etsy store that makes this much money then make sure that you watch through this entire video because I'll be showing you exactly how you can get these results with five steps once again make sure that you're watching through this entire video because if you miss even just one of these these steps the competition will eat you up and you will not be getting very many sales step number one is market research now this can mean a lot of different things like how you actually pick your niche or the products that you want to sell but assuming that you've already figured out what you want to sell and what niche you want to sell it in market research is so important when it comes to figuring out what in your niche actually sells you have to know what the demand is so that you can actually supply for that because if there isn't a demand for the designs that you're making or the niche that you're selling in you're not going to be making sales a very simple way to do market research is to actually go over to Etsy and type in whatever your product is with whatever niche you have so let's take a look at mom shirt for now and as we can see we get so many different results but what makes this so much easier is this extension right here called Everbee we're gonna click on it and click on product analysis this way we can actually look at all these other stats about these listings and figure out a lot more in-depth things one of the coolest features is that you can actually sort by estimated monthly revenue this way you can see what products are doing the absolute best and scroll your way through this is something that I and all the other print on demand youtubers that you're watching do every single day it's really important to be aware of what the market is doing and what products are actually selling so that you can jump on it right away so here's a really good example of a product that's doing really well right now because of the holiday so it was posted 12 months ago and currently it's making $24,000 a month but it's a very simple mom design that says growing a little pumpkin it's cute and it's unique and this listing does everything really really well in terms of market research what we can do now is start taking a look at these titles right here we can also start taking a look at the tags with the help of Everbee. So you'll notice right here, Everbee actually lists out all the tags that this listing uses and the volume and the competition that comes with them. What you're gonna wanna do is go through, find these designs that relate to your niche and your product. Look at what they're doing for their titles. What are they doing for their tags? What designs are they doing? Are they colored designs? Are they not? Are they simple text designs? Do they have some kind of design on them along with the text? Start writing these things down on a notepad, making sure that you're keeping track of what the top listings in your niche with those products are doing. This kind of market research will start helping you get in the mindset of these top sellers and figuring out exactly how you can create your own unique design and possibly even get inspiration from some of these designs so that you can create a number one listing. Step number two is really, really important and it's to have good product images as well as a very eye-catching main thumbnail image if we look back over on Etsy and we consider that I'm buying something for my mom as I'm scrolling through these products which of these products is going to be the most eye-catching and why what are they doing in their product images that actually gets my attention and makes me want to click on it one of the things that stands out for me right here is the comfort colors of this actual t-shirt right here and as we keep scrolling this one was unique because it does have a different thumbnail image once again the color of the shirt catches my eyes but images like this you can't really tell what the design is there's some text here there's some text here yes you can read mama but you'd have to click on it to see more and you're most likely gonna scroll past it. Whereas something like this is very vibrant, very eye-catching, and the design is right there in your face. You know exactly what's going on. So one of the things that you can start doing is going through and taking a look at these images, figure out what catches your eye, and then go ahead and make those templates. And when I say templates, yes, I mean create mock-up templates. It's really important to speed up the process when you're creating these designs so that you can spend more time creating the designs rather than having to figure out what the mock-ups are gonna look like, placing the mock-ups, figuring out the colors of all those things, and then redoing it every single time. The way that I like to go about it is actually creating my mock-up templates in Canva. That way I can simply create my designs, 
go over to Canva on my mock-up templates and just insert that design on all those templates. And let's not forget that although this thumbnail image is the most important thing, it's also very important to have a good supporting images. So right here we have a good main image and then we have a video that shows out the different colors and different styles of the product. So there's t-shirts, hoodies, crewnecks. Then we have another image of it, another image of it. This is very important when you're creating your images. You need to have the buying process in your images. Right here you get a color scheme of all the t-shirts, all of the sweatshirts, all of the youth t-shirts, toddler t-shirts, infant body suits, and then you get the size charts. So when somebody's actually going to buy these products, they don't have to ask questions about what size will fit, what does this color look like, can you show me an example? Everything they need to know is simply in those images, which makes this process frictionless. The more friction that you start adding into the buying process, the less people will go through and actually end up buying it from you. Step number three is really important right now and to get off on a good start, you need to target the holidays. We're in quarter four right now, this is when the most people are going to be spending the most amount of money, sales are going through the roof and this is your time to jump in there, start getting some easy first sales by targeting the holidays that are coming up. Right here, a very good example of how you can cross niche whatever niches you wanna sell into and the holiday. The niche right here is the mom niche or the new mother's niche and it is crossed with fall, Halloween or something like that. We obviously know that Christmas is coming up so you could also start doing mom designs with Christmas right here, mama claws. Whatever your niche happens to be, start crossing it with the holidays fall, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas. These are the big hitters. This is when people are gonna be spending the most money and try to get your designs out as fast as possible. Halloween's gonna be coming up and going by really quickly. You could probably still hit the tail end of fall, maybe a little bit of Thanksgiving, but if you're asking me what you should really be focusing on, hit Christmas really hard. Hit the last holidays of the year as hard as you can. You have a little bit of time right now to be uploading those designs. Make sure that you're crossing your niche with Christmas or those end of the year holidays. Step number four is the best way that you can stand out when you're starting a new store or if you already have an ongoing store and that's by posting personalized items. By allowing customization, you're offering more value to the customer, which makes them more likely to be buying this product from you. Yes, this does put a little bit more effort on your end, but if you're just starting out, you wanna get those early sales and you wanna do it quick. Add personalization. If we take a look at Etsy right here, you see that this row is all personalized products. They all have some kind of mama on them and in different fashions, they all allow this person to put their custom kids' names on it, or if it's a gift, they can put the mother's kids' names on that. But you understand the idea that I'm trying to get at. They allow personalization, and it's a very simple thing to do. Right here, they can put whatever names they want over the mama design, and they just put it right here. It says, add your personalization. Please enter your kids' names. They show you exactly how to do it, and if it's a grandma, you can have it like that. Mommy, they take different things other than just mama, so allow personalization because you never Never know who is going to be clicking on your design or in this case if it's dad looking for a gift for mom and he sees this perfect shirt he's going to get it for his wife it's going to say mama with the two kids on it he might also see that it says grandma as an option he might get that grandma shirt with the two grandkids names on there as well send it off to his mom by offering customization to your listings you're pulling in a lot more customers a lot more potential customers that could be buying it for different purposes or you're just offering a lot more value to your customers. But one thing to make sure of as you're doing this, make sure that your design comes across really well on this main thumbnail image. Right here, we see all these designs look really, really good. But if we scroll down to the one that I was kind of bashing on earlier, this is not a very good thumbnail image. Try to stick away from this and stay closer to something like this where you can actively see it very close up. You don't have to click on the listing and it's right there in your face. Step number five is a little bit obscure, but I promise you if you are not doing this, then you are not going to be doing very well on Etsy, and it is to perfect your listing. There are a lot of little tips and tricks that are very, very important when you're putting your listing up that will help you stand out, that will help you bring in more customers, and if you're not doing them, you're not doing it right, and let's go over a few of those. Now on all the listings that we've clicked on today, you will have noticed that there is a sale going on. This one is a monthly sale, but this one right here is a daily sale. 
daily sales work really well because they incentivize people to do an impulsive purchase because they don't know if the sale will end on that next day. It also shows up really well right here on the main feed by saying sale ends in 11 hours and the two comparable prices. The other thing that works really well is offering many different styles of the product. So right here we have the t-shirts, the sweatshirts, and the hoodies. This one listing offers three different products of the same design. That means that if anybody clicks on this crew neck listing but they decided that they wanted a shirt, they don't have to go searching for it they can still get a shirt right here. By doing this, you're guaranteeing more purchases on this listing, and if you get more purchases on a listing, Etsy is more willing to bump it up to the first page. So if you're selling t-shirts, crewnecks, and sweatshirts on one listing, you're more likely to get three times as many sales for it, bumping you up higher on the Etsy page. Another thing that people like to do is called a loss leader. That means putting a price lower than all the other prices so that when someone's scrolling through their Etsy feed, they'll notice that this price is a lot lower, they'll click on it and they won't even bat an eye as the prices are changing because they love the design, they love the initial price. Right here we can see this is happening with this adult t-shirt extra small, it's $11.99 but goes up to $19.99 whereas the rest have a consistent price across all colors and I'm assuming that it's literally only one color, where is it right here? Heather True Royal is $11.99. I'm assuming that's a color that not a lot of people end up picking. And by doing that, they're probably bringing in a lot more customers with that lowered front price. And then people just don't really care. They end up buying it because it's a cute design. The next one I already talked about earlier, but it's so important that I'm gonna cover it again. Make sure that you have good images on your product listing. You have to have the entire buying process listed out, help people know what they're buying. Also, make these images look good and make them have a consistent theme. As you notice, the backgrounds on all these images right here are the same, the color schemes are the same, it all fits and it all vibes really well. If you're offering personalization on your product, which I recommend you do, it's very important that you offer some kind of example so that people know what they're supposed to type into this box. Otherwise, people get confused, they type something, they don't type everything, and then you have to start reaching out to them. And once you have to start reaching out to a customer to get information, things just don't go as smoothly as you'd like. This product listing does a really good job, has the example, it shows all the other possible things that you can change it into, and it lets you write it in in that form. This next one isn't super crazy important, but it is very important to still do, and that's have a good description. Make sure everything that somebody could ever wanna know is in your description. How to order the product, a little bit about the product, your production and shipping times. You can also add some of the keywords that you wanna have, some tags, whatever, in the description. That way you might show up with SEO a lot better. These are just some of those tips and tricks that I found out during my time on Etsy. I'm sure there are so many other ones that you guys can start picking up on, like design tips or making sure that some colors are there and some colors aren't there. The best way to figure these things out is by going through the top listings in your niche or whatever you happen to be selling in and looking at what those people are doing to make those listings the top listings in their area. A really good saying that I once heard and that I'm probably misinterpreting is that success leads footprints. There's always a way to recreate it if you just follow those footprints, those footsteps. Obviously, I'm not saying steal designs. You have to make your own unique designs, but you could start using inspiration from these designs and put your own little twist on it. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I do really appreciate you guys for watching. If you want to check out Everbee, the very important market research tool that I'm currently using, you can check it out with the link in my description. It is very, very useful. I use it every single day. And if you have any comments about anything that I said in this video, be sure to let me know down in the comment section. Otherwise, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.